What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Explore USA RV Supercenter in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we're going to take a look at this absolutely awesome and enormous Cyclone fifth wheel toy hauler. This thing is super, super huge. Of course, three axles, wouldn't expect any less on something this large, but we're going to take a closer look at the inside and the outside of this unit. But first, let's take a look at the numbers. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is gonna have a gross vehicle weight rating of 21,000 pounds. So believe it or not, that's kind of special because it's a thousand pounds over a lot of toy haulers that are similar. Now there are toy haulers I know that go way above that and there are a lot of them that are at actually 21,000 pounds. But again, a lot of them are at 20,000 pounds. So this puts the overall weight of this unit fully loaded a thousand pounds heavier than a lot of them. It's gonna ride on three 7,000 pound axles. It's gonna have G-rated tires and it's gonna have a cargo capacity of 4,741 pounds. If this RV had a 20,000 pound weight rating, then that would be 3,741 pounds so by upping that slightly it gives you a thousand pounds more cargo capacity but you always want to be careful how much weight you're actually loading in the back of a toy hauler because just like a teeter-totter it's going to transfer weight away from the vehicle and you don't want to do too much of that anyways for something this large full profile wide body man this thing is huge definitely recommend you tow this thing behind a dually. I would not put this behind a single rear wheel truck. I want the redundancy. I want the stability. I want the traction. I want the payload capacity. I want everything when it comes to being able to handle this type of weight. And again, just look how long this unit is. All right, we're going to go check out the inside of this unit, then come back out. Kurt Rotaflex. This rides on a Rhino frame. I can already tell by the shape of the, the wings for the pin box. Now check this out. What is unusual about the stair placement on this unit? Most of you have probably figured it out by now, but they actually put the stairs in the slide out. One of the benefits of this newer type of stair design, which has now been out for seven or eight years, is the fact that you can put stairs and entries in places that you typically couldn't. So you can now put it out on the slide, which is pretty cool. Um, you don't have to have the slide out to get into the RV though. So some people might wonder, do you have to have this out for you to be able to put the stairs out? And no, you don't have to. But this is the 4014C, a lot of people will like that sticker, Asdell Composite Panels, which means that these panels aren't built with wood, and you pretty much avoid the, the uh, chance that you're going to have delamination or rot because that's a composite panel. All right, you have a nice strut-assisted door down here, which is cool and a bit unusual in a good way. You have this interesting kind of rug material down here as well. All right, let's quickly pan around this unit so you can see what it's all about. Opposing slide outs here in the living room kitchen space, which is nice, which means that's on a slide. And this is also on a slide, which, you know, we already talked about the stairs coming off of the slide. So when you come in, you got this real large entry space because the door isn't right here like you typically would see it. The door is pushed out to the slide itself. Whether you like it or you don't like it, it is pretty cool. Up here, you can see the woodwork that they've done above the dinette area, the four-person freestanding dinette, as well as the love seat or the theater seating right here. Nice trim work coming around this way. Check out the cabinetry colors. Everything's very contrasting. Over here, you have your theater seating as well. So you have seating there and then kind of this offset seating right here, which could possibly make for some awkward conversation because you have folks sitting there, folks sitting here, you're spaced kind of not, you know, directly across from each other, and that could be could be interesting. If you have a floor plan like that, let me know how you feel about it. JBL sound system, 30-inch panoramic Furion fireplace. You got storage all around. This is probably your controls right here. Yep, all your controls are behind this panel. You got more cabinetry up top there, more cabinetry up here. This has the Norcold 18 cubic foot PolarMax gas electric refrigerator. Over here you have your upgraded cooktop, four burner cooktop, and this is the Greystone version of it. So a lot of people are familiar with the Insignia. This is Greystone's version of that residential kind of drop-in unit. Over here you have your Greystone residential microwave. More cabinetry. This would essentially be your pantry space. You got a lot of it up top and down below. A ton of drawers right here. You got five drawers right there, two cabinets, and then solid surface covers for your single basin sink and a nice upgraded faucet here. 
Stepping back this way, got some more storage in here as well. And then you got your ladder to take you up to this kind of a mini loft. You know, I don't really even consider that a loft. I would consider that extra storage because it's it's only half the width of the floor plan. So it's only about four feet deep and even less whenever you take that wall thickness into consideration. Has a nice collapsible ladder though. So great place to store a Christmas tree. If you live in this thing full time, you wanna find a place for a Christmas tree or other things that you might stock away, this is a good spot for it. Then before we go in the garage, you got another cabinet right here. Ooh, dual pane windows. See insulated window right there. So this actually has dual pane windows on it as well. They actually do make a big difference. Nice little bar area with a solid surface counter on it as well. Let's check out the garage space. Oh, they put a little decorative wainscot design in here. This is a huge garage. Don't know exactly how long it is, but I'm gonna venture to say it's probably 13 feet long. That's what I'm guessing. It may actually say somewhere on the wall. Sometimes they do. Easy enough to find out on their website. Nice cornered sink right here. Solid surface countertop, undermount bowl. That's very cool. You usually don't see that much effort put into the sink on a toy hauler. The bathroom. Wow, so you actually have two full baths here. You have a nice cornered shower plus a porcelain foot flush toilet. That is really cool. That is actually surprising. You, you very rarely see that. You usually see a half bath in the garage space. Nice little elevator system for your queen size bed up here that can go to the very top. Plus you have a bed here and you can throw a table in between. And then the back patio doors are currently closed. We have a nice screened in area back here as well as a nice back patio that is nice and protected from the outside. So you have the ability to put a dog or a puppy or something back here as long as it's not too small to fit into between some of the uh, the gaps there. But nice space, especially for kids. Very cool, a lot of tie downs in here. So if you bring your toys with you, you can strap them down nice and well. You have a TV up here, more cabinetry, and check this out, a second loft. And this one is certainly big enough to actually sleep somebody. So you do have room on this one and you have some power up top, some lighting. So this is a functional loft for a person and the other one on the inside is a great place for storage. Very, very cool. This toy hauler has a lot of hidden surprises. Got your third AC back here. You're gonna have one here above the living room and then you'll have one in the bedroom up front. All right, let's work our way to the front of this unit now. Check out these enormous light switches. Nice blackout blinds over the windows. Always like to see those. Has a nice Encore solid shower system in here, which is nice, nice cornered Cabinetry medicine cabinet, solid surface countertops, drawers, cabinet down there, porcelain foot flush toilet. All right, so stepping into the bedroom. So check this wall of mirrors out. You got four mirrors. Actually, yeah, four mirrors. These are kind of half mirrors on these doors over here. Got a lot of wardrobe space over here, more wardrobe space towards the end. TV already mounted. Dual pane window in here as well. Coming around this way, you got a spot here, I'm guessing, for a washer and dryer in the rest of your closet. Yep, there's your washer and dryer connections. This is where you put your stackable unit. Or this can actually fold down into a platform. That is really cool. So you could even use that as a desk. Has a nice little light above it, but this is unique because typically if you wanna add a washer and dryer to most RVs, you have to remove shelving. But in this unit, you simply flip it up and you have space for it. That's very thoughtful. Got quite a bit of room in here as well. And this is the space behind these uh, cabinets right here. All right, so folding the doors open. You can see you have some shelving in there, very nice. And you have some storage on the inside right there and then some outside storage right here. Bed is positioned nice and low, memory foam mattress. Of course, this flips up and you have storage space that's nice and trimmed off underneath. Got some nice shelves right there as well. You have this long shelf that runs over the headboard. Very, very cool. Super, super tiny sink. I didn't notice that earlier, but you know, it's functional. And if it gets the job done for you and it takes up less space in an RV, I'm all for it. So that's kind of cool actually. Anyways, guys, uh, I don't think I've talked about the price of this one. So this has an MSRP of $180,539. 
180,000, which means the sale price on this unit is going to be significantly less. So if you're interested in this, don't think you're going to pay 180 grand for it. You're going to pay a lot less, but you have to call the dealership because they're not putting a sale price on the actual units like they used to. Anyways, let's hop outside and take a look at the outside of this really, really cool toy hauler. Okay, starting from the front, working our way back. This is going to be where your propane lives. It has a 30 pound propane can in here. Open up your first storage bay. Uh, that's as high as it's letting me open it, so that's a little weird. I think it is supposed to go higher, but these strut arms aren't extending all the way because this TV is designed to be able to kind of slide out here so you have an outside TV. So yeah, the uh, strut arms need to be adjusted on this unit. It is prepped for the LCI Tire Link Tire Pressure Monitoring System, which is really cool. Nice basement storage, and then you can see access to the front storage right there. And then underneath there, you're going to have your hydraulics as well as your battery box. Very cool. And this does have the hydraulic auto leveling system on it. And then in here, I actually have no idea what's behind here. So you have your, wow, that's a pretty good sized griddle to be honest with you. I was not expecting something this large. Just got to see how we release it. There it is. Check that out. That is probably the largest grill I have seen included on an RV ever. That is pretty cool. I'll close that up. This is a rack and pinion slide, 12 inch I-beam frame front to back as well. I would imagine they would have used rack and pinion primarily because of the, the weight that you're gonna add to this slide out whenever you enter and exit through this, this side. There's a lot of leverage right there, so you definitely want the strongest slide out system you can have. Three awnings on this one side, check that out. And then you're gonna have a fourth awning on the back to cover up the back patio. It says the Moride step above steps. Over here, this is gonna run the Saloon tires. Cree 3000 suspension, has the nice reinforced shackle hangers. I believe it does need greasable wet bolts and heavy duty shackle straps though, which it doesn't have, but that's a relatively inexpensive upgrade. You just have to buy four of them because you have three axles. And again, the Saloon S637 tires, big fan of those tires. You have your rear entry exit right here. You have your vent right there for cross ventilation inside of your garage space if you have toys in there. There's going to be your awning up top, the Thule crown, your back patio area. All LED lighting, nice collapsible ladder to get you up to the roof if you need to do anything up there. Nice scene lighting, good LEDs on this side so you can get some good outside lighting over here, especially over your fueling station right here. Here's the other half of your cross ventilation. So this is the back portion of the vent to get all those fumes out, 50 amp connection. Again, your fueling station's right here. You're generally gonna have two tanks on here, one of them for your generator and then one of them for whatever toys you might bring with you. Another look at your tires and suspension. And this is a cable driven slide on this side and a cable driven slide up front. They mainly do that for weight reduction. Over here, you have your wastewater tank levers in there. Empty out your black and gray tank. Outside of your furnace, outside of your water heater. In here, you're gonna have your wet bay and the other part of your pass-through storage. So there's your Nautilus panel for your wet bay. All your water connections. Nice little drain area down here next to where your frame would be. So your frame passes through on the other side of this and then the other part of your storage, which you can access from the front, which is really cool. Super, super nice unit. Huge though, this thing is enormous. This does have a generator installed on it because you can see the exhaust pipe coming there. If you guys wanna see that really quick, I can open up this. This has the Onan 5500. Very nice, gas generator. So what do you guys think of this huge toy hauler? Very, very cool, huge. Again, dually towable. You could probably get away with some single rear wheel trucks, but for the life of me, I wouldn't even try. Um, this is definitely one of the nicer toy haulers I've seen. A few little confusing elements in the living room space. 
Um, but aside from that, they've done a pretty good job with this floor plan. But please leave a comment below. I'd love to know your thoughts as well. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.